Harding. Here. Johnson. Here. Melton. Here. Palermo. Oh Rowe. Here. Bagley. Here. Mr. President. Here. Please rise for the pledge of invocation by Councilmember Don Rowe. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may have a seat. When I started this work uh, down here at the city, little did I know I would be entering the land of the acronym. I mean, every week it's TIF, it's CDBG, it's AEO 1, 2, and 3. And did you know that even today there's an FAE rodeo going on in the city of Omaha? Well, next week, I'm happy, uh, my wife is happy to know that uh, we're entering at the season of the PSL. Now, I'd call it Labor Day, but she calls it the first day that she can legitimately go to Hardy Coffee and order a pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> Speaking of celebrations like that, I wanted to sh give a shout out and an HBD to the Oracle of Omaha, who turned 92 today. An affidavit of publication is on file for the pre-council and city council meeting, and a current copy of the Open Meeting Act is posted in a white binder on the east wall of legislative chambers. Good afternoon, and welcome to the Omaha City Council. We look forward to your testimony on our items here today. I would encourage you to turn your cell phones off, or at least turn them to vibrate. Items. Oh. We do have uh, one announcement today. I had the pleasure of speaking to a group who's here with us today in the chambers. Uh, from the Bold Institute on Civic Engagement. It's an international exchange program with UNO. And we have a number of leaders here from Bosnia Herzegovina with us. We appreciate your interest in city government and welcome to Omaha. <laughs> Madam Clerk. Item six, request from Council Member Bagley to reconsider ordinance 43066. Is there a motion? Make a motion to reconsider. Second. Ms. Melton, you're recognized. Uh, thank you. I know this doesn't come up very often, but I, I think in my nine years, I, I've never voted against um, reconsidering something at the request of a council member. It has nothing to do with whether I agree with how they're gonna vote later, the issue. Um, I just have a firm belief that sometimes we make mistakes. I think I did it two weeks ago, um, where I voted on an issue that I thought we were on a different number. Occasionally that happens while we're trying to sometimes multitask and we're looking at different agenda items while we're on something else. So um, it's always been my policy to allow a council member to uh, reconsider a vote if they've mistake, mistakenly voted against it. So I'm gonna maintain that today. Thank you. Mr. Bagley, you're recognized. Thanks, Mr. President, and thanks Council Member Melton for that. I, I just wanna make a couple comments on this because um, it's been discuss in the public forum for a while, and I wanted to make my position clear on why um, we're doing this today. Number one, I wanna thank the Charter Committee that put a great deal of time, spent weeks working together on this. Eight of them were appointed by the mayor and each of the council members appointed one. And I, I also wanna say I value my relationship with the mayor. Uh, she's the executive of our city. In this council, we, we work to get along and we support things we, we want, and then if we oppose them, we, we have the, these meetings to do that. It wasn't a personal or partisan issue for me. When I heard from constituents on this, and as one of my colleagues always taught me, what does your gut tell you? And my gut was very clear on this, and my constituents that I talked to overwhelmingly were very clear on this. To me, it's good to have boots and eyes on the ground when something happens in Omaha. I mean, you can go back in the last year, what's happened in the city. This is a picture of Knox Creek, the fire down in South Omaha in my district. It was on June the 5th, it was a Sunday. Last summer, we had some storms that blew through Omaha. It flooded downtown, it flooded Saddle Creek, different areas of the city. 
impacted constituents, citizens of Omaha. And there's a couple articles that I read and being a student of politics, you know, you see things in the news. Here's a picture of the governor of California, Gavin Newsom. There was an article November the 12th, 2020, he apologized for a bad mistake for attending a birthday party. Here's the governor of Montana. There was some storms, unprecedented flooding, devastated the state. He was out of the country. Here's a picture of Ted Cruz. He's in an airport. He commented he obviously made a mistake when he was going to Cancun for a family outing when there was the state of Texas was under a deep freeze. These are Democrats and Republicans. And I remember at the time when I saw this, just as a public servant, you gotta understand that there's needs of the people 24 seven. Each of us up here, the mayor, we don't work Monday through Friday. We work seven days a week working on things for this position because we value our public service. The reason I brought all those up, I, I just wanted to say in closing, you know, we got people that work for the city, local 251, 385 police officers. They answer the call every day. They weren't working from home or working away. The mayor, if it's the Honorable Hal Dobb, the Honorable Mike Fahey, the Honorable Jim Suttle, the Honorable Gene Stothert, or a future mayor, my position isn't partisan on this. It is based on the principle that I believe we should have boots on the grounds for the pictures I showed people that happened when the mayor was out of town. And I am not faulting the mayor, any mayor, for being out of town. My whole purpose on this was, I believe that in this case would be Council President Fesserson, would be eyes and boots on the ground, communication with the mayor. To me, that's what people deserve. Um, and I think that can be a great thing. You, you put aside things and you, you deal with the issues at hand. There are several more I could have, could have dealt with. Um, when the charter committee met, I went back and looked at the, the transcripts from it. And again, the charter committee members did a great job investing their time. When it was framed at the beginning that if the mayor is out of town in Ralston or Council Bluffs, Lincoln, Bellevue, anywhere, then it, the power goes to the council president. Well, at the time, the charter members didn't know how many days the mayor was out of town. And again, it doesn't matter who the mayor is. The mayor can do things from where they are, but I just have the simple belief that if the mayor is gone, that there should be eyes and boots on the ground. So that's why I put this up for reconsideration. Thanks, Mr. President. Thank you. No further lights. There's a motion and a second to reconsider. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Item six is approved, seven to zero. <laughs> Item seven, amendment of the whole as approved at the August 23rd city council meeting. Ms. Melton, you're recognized. Uh, yes, thanks. I understand that we're reconsidering this. I just want to say that I remain today confused about what happened last week. I heard um, we got a last minute amendment at literally at two o'clock, but I listened to Council Member Palermo give a very impassioned speech as to why this should go to the vote of the people. I believe that all of the charter amendments should go to a vote of the people. Even though we laid over last week, we're going to take it up at, in the 2024, all of these should go on the ballot. We received 24, and but for a couple that we were able to combine, one we were able to change by policy, and one we're passing an ordinance on. So we're addressing all of them. All of these should go on a ballot. That's what the Charter Convention is about. It should go to a vote of the people. If I want to vote yes for it, I get to check yes on the ballot. If I want to vote no, I get to vote no on the ballot. All of you get to have a vote on it. If you don't like this, vote no, it won't pass. But that's the point of having a charter convention. It's so that it's not just this city council that sits up here every day that makes all the decisions for all of you all the time. This gives the people of the city to have a say every 10 years in changes to the charter. 
This was passed unanimously, unanimously by the Charter Convention. And by the way, I just want to remind people, when you say the mayor was out of town 84 days, 84 days, we have 104 weekend days per year. So a person that works a Monday through Friday job takes off 104 days a year if they take Saturday and Sunday off. That means that the mayor, who only took 84 off, for the most part, was working six days a week when she was here. And I can also tell you when the mayor is here, she's up, she's at an 8.30 meeting, I'll see her at a, at a noon meeting, I'll see her again at three o'clock, and then I'll run into her at a fundraising dinner at 6.30 and she's not getting home until 10 o'clock. Our mayor works more, more than most of us. And when she's here, and even when she's out of town during one of those events, I spent an hour and a half on the phone with her. Even if she's out of town caring for her sick mother in St. Louis on a Saturday and Sunday, while the rest of us are maybe mowing our lawn or doing something else, I just think that the way that this was characterized was somebody saying, well, if I took 84 days off, well, 84 days, and that doesn't include any sick time or vacation time. So the majority of us, if you work at Monday through Friday, I, I don't, I tend to work on weekends as well. The city council, you're, you're doing things on weekends. We're attending events. We're attending things in the evenings. So we do work a lot and we do work our other jobs. But if you think about it on a Monday through Friday, if people take weekends off, they're taking off 104 and that doesn't count any sick days or vacation days. So I just wanted, somebody has taken the characterization of 84 days off and I think blown it into something that we hadn't actually thought about. And she, the mayor does deserve to have a day off here and there. I don't believe that any of us, if you elected any of us to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, that I, I just think that those expectations are wrong. Now, do we need to jump in if there's an emergency and it's 10 o'clock at night, 11 o'clock at night, midnight? Absolutely, we gotta, be, we gotta be on call. We have to be there, we have to be there for our constituents and be available. But to say that the mayor didn't deserve 84 days off in a year, I think at least that should go to the vote of, a, of the people. We're gonna put all of them to a vote of the people. So even this one, if we don't put it on this ballot, it should go on the ballot in the spring ballot of 2024. That's what the charter convention is for. And if this body is gonna overrule the charter convention on what they unanimously vote on, then I don't know why we have the charter convention. So I'm just a little confused Councilman Palermo reminded me of that and gave a very impassioned speech, and so I voted to support his request. And then I, then he votes no, and I find out that basically it was just a ruse or something. I'm not sure. I, it was never explained, and I've never been contacted. So I had a sincere intention of supporting something that a council member brought to me, and I, I guess I just felt um, a little duped. Um, so I... I was supporting not putting it on this ballot and waiting till the next one in the legislative committee because that's what two of the other members wanted. That's part of how we work in government. You got three to want it, you're out. I agreed, let's put it on the 2024 ballot. And maybe it would have a better chance, chance of passing because it would be closer to the next mayoral election. So I thought if we really actually wanted this passed, a little extra time may be good so that we could actually have these discussions in the community and it wasn't just couched on one side. So I'm fine if we don't do it today, but I do plan to put it on the 2024 ballot because I think we owe that to the charter convention, just like there's another charter amendment that I don't agree with. It still should go to vote of the people, let the people decide. I mean, that's what we have it for. So I guess I'm just a little confused why this is even here today and why a council member would so impassionately ask us to vote for it, and then vote no. And now here we are. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Palermo, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> Council Member Melton, I don't know that I'm gonna get all your questions answered, but I'll try to clear up a little bit of last week. So you're right, uh, the items that got forwarded from the Charter Convention should all end up on the ballot. 
But what we've seen last week is agenda item 29 was placed on file because there were some changes that need to be made. And so when I found that out last week at 1 o'clock, 1.15, uh, whenever it was, uh, I said, well, if that's the case, then I know what the executive branch really wants, and that is the amendment of the whole. And I had mentioned, you realize, to our mayor, that will not pass. And she said, no, it, it, it should and it will, and I've heard from a lot of people, and, and it should be on there. And make no mistake, when you hear council members talk about being thankful for the charter convention, they're exactly right. But if you're not doing the math in your head, we each got one selection. The executive branch got eight selections. Okay, do the math. The eight, if they get together, will always overrule. Now, of course, a lot of these, if not all of them, came to us unanimous. But when you have eight votes on a board and you have the majority already, you're going to get what you want. So, yes, things will change along the way that were presented to us. But let me remind you, those 15 people were appointed. And I have to remind you, we are elected. That means we are beholden to no one but the constituents who voted for us. We are the representation that here day in and day out, emails, phone calls at the store, school all day for me, church, when I'm out walking the neighborhood, I hear from everybody about everything, good and bad. Very few items did I ever hear 100% on except for one. And that was the executive branch being out of town, and I don't even care for how many days. I'm not here to argue if it was 85 and it was a weekend. Maybe it wasn't a weekend. Maybe it was days off, and then you add the weekends to it. Then you add the holidays to it. Who knows where we're at? I don't care. I have always said I respect the mayor. She has a very difficult job. It's not for the mayor we have. Everybody deserves a day off, including the mayor we have now. That's not what this is about. This is about listening to your constituents, loud and clear, sitting up here, and saying, okay, for the first time, I've had one agenda item where it's 100% no. But let me make this clear. When I say 100% no about uh, we want our executive branch to be in the city more than what has shown they were in the city, in all fairness, almost every one of them people said they really appreciate the job Mayor Stothert's doing. So I'm not up here saying she's gone, they're unhappy, they're happy with the job, but they feel the leader of the city, the mayor of the city, the executive branch should be in place uh, more than what has been shown. So of course, regardless of how this plays out, I'm going to make the motion again based on what I heard loud and clear of what they want to presented. And if we sit up here, and we make a decision for anybody else but the constituents that we represent, then shame on us. Shame on us for not be beholding to our constituents, not the third floor. Because I vote for what my people want. And, and you know what? A lot of people aren't happy about some of my votes. There are agenda items. I can't make everybody happy. But it's the majority. But you know what? Not one person on any floor in the city county building can ever tell me what to vote unless they live in my district, and then I'll listen to them. But I'm still going to take the majority. So when you have elected officials that are elected, not appointed, sitting up here, not being honest about what they heard in the community, because we all get it. You can't hide, right? Don, Danny, Juanita, you might have been able to hide a year ago, but you can't now. You go to a restaurant, you go out with your family, you're with your friends, you're going to see something, no matter where you're at in the metro area. And they're going to bend your ear. And if anybody has heard anything but overwhelming disappointment about the days being gone, and that's where the amendment of the whole comes from, with the five or more, they're just not being honest. And that's not what we're here for. Um, I see another light. I could talk all day long on this, but at the end of the day, I'm beholding to my constituents, and I will vote the way I hear that they want me to vote, and that is to vote against this amendment of the whole, which I suppose as we move down, uh, the original, what was placed from the legislative committee will uh, be in front of us, and maybe we vote for that, maybe we don't. 
and that will be on the ballot. So again, things are going to make it to the ballot, but it doesn't mean you can't tweak them and talk about concerns along the way. And if you're not, you're not being honest. Thank you. Is that a motion? Uh, that's a motion to approve the amendment of the whole. It's a mo motion. No, you may not. Is that a motion to deny? I think is what the proper motion, right? Well, yeah, unless we vote against it. A motion, motion to deny the amendment of the whole. Just so we're all clear, this is a motion to deny the amendment of the whole. Madam Clerk, correct me if I'm wrong. That means if you are uh, for this, can I ask this so we're clear? If you're for this, you vote against it. A motion no. to deny, you want if to vote you, yes. If you're for it, if you're against it, you vote yes. This, this is a motion to deny, so a vote in favor of the motion to deny will reverse what was approved last week. Okay. Correct. Just so, just so we're all clear. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So I'll, I, I'll second that. Mr. Harding, you're recognized. need a scorecard to, to figure out what's going on here. Um, I'm not sure I, I, with all due respect, Mr. Vice President, I'm not sure I follow your logic. What, what was on our agenda last week um, had nothing to do with um, the mayor's um, presence and the order of succession and when that was required that wasn't even on our agenda last week. Um, so to, I, I, I'm not following the logic as to why you would bring that up as an amendment of the whole to include that portion on there when it wasn't even being, it wasn't even something that we were going to be considering. And as you just said, you, you know, you'll put that on, or you're supportive of having that on a future ballot, which is exactly where it would have been. So I, I don't know that I'm following the logic and then to introduce that and then vote against your own amendment of the whole. Um, again, I, I, I wasn't following the, I, I don't follow the logic. So I, I'm not sure why, I'm not sure why it was even brought up as a consideration knowing that it would be a consideration on a, on a future ballot. So let me ask um, Madam Clerk, um, so the motion is to deny the amendment of the whole. Is that correct? All right. Thank you. No further lights. There's a motion and a second to deny. Roll call. Hardy. Johnson. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Palermo? Yes. Rowe? No. Begley? Aye. Mr. President? Yes. Motion passed 4 to 3. Ordinance 43066 as originally presented at the August 23rd, 2022 City Council meeting. Mr. Harding, you're recognized. If I, may, if I make comments to the um, amendment of the whole, am I out of order? Yes. Am I? Okay. So, so this amendment that we are, are, I'm sorry, so this ordinance that we are considering um, does not anticipate or does not contemplate um, what would happen if a mayor is in Council Bluffs or at a Union Omaha game in Werner Park in Sarpy County or somewhere in Papillion or La Vista, where the, char the, the letter of the charter today says that, um, that you are supposed to notify the clerk and that then the president of the city council would be the acting mayor. Um, I know there was a, an amendment of the whole that we, we just voted on that um, I think contemplated or addressed some of those issues as the, the convention addressed. And while I may not have been supportive of all of the, um, all of the components of, of that that the, the charter convention put forward, like the five days, I, I could see that being something certainly less than that. Um, but the, you know, it, it was interesting. It, it was I, I could have done the same thing to to this ordinance, 
to amend it such that we say, okay, when you're in Papillion, or w let's say it's w if you're within 200 miles of the city of Omaha, or that you can be within the city limits of Omaha within a, a, a certain period of time. Those are all amendments that we could have put in there and, and considered, but then we would have been kind of usurping the process that, that we set out, and that was to allow public input um, to be to be given to those components of any suggestions that the, the Charter Convention put forward, much as Councilmember Palermo put forward with his amendment of the whole. So it, it, it seems interesting to me that, that the reason I'm not putting any amendments forward on this, uh, on this item, is that I think we told the, the public what we were going to do with all of the charter amendments. And I'm going to be um, consistent with what we told the public and not put up any amendments so that they could, my, I don't want to, I'm not going to put up my own amendment to, to vote against it. And I think the process we set forward and, and what we told the public, and if we're going to be transparent to the public, I think we need to follow through on what we've told the public. And we told the public that we were going to put all the all those items that the, the Charter Convention forwarded to us on a future ballot. So again, I, I, I'm still trying to figure out the logic of what transpired last week and the, and the theatrics that, that maybe were intended. Thank you, Mr. Palermo, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Sorry, it caught me off guard. I've seen the light disappear. Um, if we're talking about consistency and we're talking about being clear, then I'll remind you to a week ago where we had a charter amendment unanimously forwarded to the city council for approval to be put on the ballot that was placed on file. Is that, is that what you uh, recall, the law department? Matt Cousy, law department, that's what occurred with the ordinance that you're referring to. Okay, thank you. So, so when I hear they're going to make the ballot and changes out of nowhere and keeping things the same, well, were they the same? Because the agenda item 29 was placed on file last week. So I'm confused. Now I'm confused. I made everybody confused. Now I'm confused myself. It, you can't have it both ways. You either don't touch anything and you move it forward. Or like I said, you sit here with a charter convention that wasn't evenly split, that sent us recommendations, and we sit up here not listening to our constituents. We're asked to do it every single day on every single item, make hard decisions that doesn't please everybody. But now all of a sudden, a, a change is made to remind people of what we've heard loud and clear through the community for some time, and, and, and now it's a problem. Thank you. Mr. Bigley, you're recognized. Thanks, Mr. President. I, I want to be clear again. When I read the transcript of the Charter Convention, the great work they did, it wasn't ever framed to them that the mayor was out of town 84 days. And again, it, that doesn't matter to me how many days any mayor is gone. But when I had discussions with a couple people on the Charter Convention, it wasn't framed to them that way. And, and I suspect if in fact, I know in talking and having the conversations I had, that would have changed the dynamic if they would have said, Mayor X is out of town 100 plus days a year. Or if you say, the mayor goes to Papillion or Ralston or Carter Lake. It's all in the framing of how you put it out there. And there was discussions. They had three separate dates from the transcripts that I got. So again, I, I it's important to know the context of what was said in that and what they were acting on. If they would have known it was 100 days a year average, maybe that's what it would be for any mayor. It would have changed the outcome of what came out of that committee. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hardy. Um, I want to address the, um, the item that, that was just mentioned by Councilmember Palermo. Um, first of all, we 
said that all these were going to be on a future ballot and i think to a person that day we all said that that that's our intention that that would be on a future ballot as a matter of fact it passed to put that on file seven to zero including a vote from you in favor of such a motion i think the reason it was the reason we put it on file was i think with conversations with the law department that there were some and and other departments which would have a ripple effect on codes that were already on our books and not having that contemplated when it came through the charter convention that was the reason it was placed on file but i think to a person we all said that that would still appear on a future ballot so again i'm, I'm still trying to figure out the logic i'm, I'm sure maybe at two in the morning it'll hit me and um, i won't call you until the next morning Thank you. There's no further lights. We need a motion on Ordinance 43066, which for clarity purposes uh, addresses um, disability provisions. Mr. Harding, you're recognized. All right. So it may be confusing to others, again, if they're not, if they're not following along on their score or their dance card. I'm going to make the motion to approve this because this is, in its form, what was originally presented to us by the charter convention it has nothing to do with any mayor present or future and their powers when they are away from the city i want that very clear that but i am making the motion for approval on this motion on this ordinance i'll second miss melton you're recognized yeah I'm, I, I just want to clarify this is what we're voting on is what the legislative committee originally presented to this council that wasn't changed until two o'clock last week so this is just what was originally on there we could have just voted on it last week and we wouldn't be here today um and what the legislative committee contemplated was we kind of separated the two issues so that they wouldn't both be on the ballot at the same time so we can vote on this on the ballot in 22 and we can forward and potentially discuss maybe amending some of the language on when the mayor is out of town and define that before we put it on the ballot in 2024. And I think that's exactly what we should do. What council member Harding had, had discussed is try and figure out how we kind of have a, a balance between that so that you don't have to notify um, the president of the council um, when you just go to Ralston. So this is the original suggestion by the legislative committee to put on the ballot for 2022, which I was going to support last week and will continue to support this week. Thank you. There's a motion and a second to approve Ordinance 43066. Roll call. Harding? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Melton? Yes. Palermo? Yes. Rowe? Yes. Bagley? Aye. Mr. President? Yes. Motion passed 7 to 0. Item 8, a resolution to approve the preliminary plat for Indian Point Replat 4, located southeast of 189th Street and George Miller Parkway. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. The public hearing and vote on number eight is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Ms. Johnson, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I just have a few questions regarding the uh, preliminary plat entitled Indian Point Replat 4 on city, lim on city limits. Um, Sounds like a fantastic opportunity for jobs. So uh, I would like for someone to uh, come up to the mic and address those concerns that I have on that. Doug Kellner with TD2-10836 Old Mill Road here on behalf of the applicant. Um, something with jobs, I guess. What yes. And I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. Doug Kellner. Doug, hi. How are you today? Good. Good. Um, li like I said in my opening, I thought this was a excellent opportunity for jobs throughout the city of Omaha. Um, we know that um, people are 
um, have a certain amount of skills that they could contribute to provide uh, assets to the city of Omaha. So I was just wondering, um, were, did you do any type of notification in the area here um, to the neighborhood that this project is going on? I, I believe the homeowners association did. It's, it's the homeowners association is the one bringing it. So, um, so they, they would have sent it out through there. So what's the name of the homeowner association? Uh, Indian Point Homeowners Association. And they're not here today, so you don't know the answer to that question. So you don't know if any notification. Well, they had to. I mean, they had to agree to platting this, so the homeowners association is aware of it. Okay. And so when we uh, begin building, uh, will we um, have? You know, will there be subcontractors, or how will we uh, roll this out? Uh, well, they are selling the residential lots off to make enough money to be able to build their, um, to build the uh, clubhouse that they're building. Okay. So when they begin to build the clubhouse, where, um, how, who will do that work? Uh, well, they'll hire a general contractor and the general contractor will hire subs out. Okay, so all of that hasn't been determined at this point? Correct. Okay. But um, just based on your general background, your knowledge, what have you, uh, the subcontractor would then go out to the community, meaning Omaha, Nebraska, yes. and notify folks that these opportun uh, job opportunity would exist? Is that yes. correct? Yes. And um, <coughs> how do they do that? How do they go about notifying the community just, just general information? Uh, typically, it's uh, a knowledge base of people they've worked with before um, and spread it around. You know, the contractors are very short-handed right now, so they're always looking for anybody they can find to build something. So typically, do they reach out to all subcontractors in the city of Omaha, or do they just identify friends, family, how, how, how does that process work? Uh, well, it wouldn't be, uh, it's not like an SID where you're open to public bid. It would be more of the contractors sending it out to people that they know do the work or something and, and who they maybe had experience with in the past. So it wouldn't necessarily be a, a job opportunity for someone in District Two, for the most part, would you say? It might not. It might. I don't. I don't know where all the subs are located. Okay. All right. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you, Ms. Milton. You're recognized. Oh, thanks. I just wanted to remind everybody this is that we're voting on a on a preliminary plat that's being brought. Um, Correct. And I believe it's. They're selling off individual lots, so it could, it'd be different builders and developers. So the person that purchased the lot, like I could, if I wanted to build a house there, I'd buy the lot, and then I would go look for my own builder. Correct. Well, they're they're actually being sold to a builder, so that builder will. So they'll so they'll sell to that, then the builder will sell it to individual. Correct. And where, there's a there's just a whole number of builders in Omaha right. at this point, and I I would assume they're. They'd be more than happy to have people from yeah, anywhere yeah. inside the city or outside the city because I know that We're they're looking, looking for workers. For yeah, yes. there is a labor shortage, so um, uh, I'm sure that they would be happy to hire anyone that is willing to work. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. You're recognized. And so when we talk about the clubhouse, the clubhouse would be an opportunity for a subcontractor to build that. Um, Clubhouse. It would not be an individual house that would be um, choosing who would build and, and things of that nature. Is that correct? Correct, but it would be still under the a general contractor who would hire the sub. They would not. The homeowners association would not act as the general, so they would hire a general to hire the different subs. And as you stated before, that general contractor more often than not would uh, seek for. Uh, employment or people to provide that skill set from individuals that um, they're familiar with or have done business with before and I would echo again not individuals from District 2. 
again, I don't know where subs are located. Um, you know, it could be anywhere around the city. It may be outside of the city. But more often than not, based upon normal ways of handling business, the opportunity for individuals who live and work in District 2 probably would not be notified of these jobs, correct? Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that because I know there's a lot of affordable building space in that area, so it wouldn't surprise me that subs also have building space in those areas. Um, so then the statement of people, they would reach out to people that they're familiar with would not necessarily be 100% correct because they would maybe venture off from those people <coughs> because if you put a notification out in say the Omaha Star or the Omaha World Hero, then, then the opportunity for you to have a wider pool of people to apply for or be considered for opportunities to build the clubhouse would be available, correct? Well, again, I don't understand why you're saying that they aren't being invited. I, I, I don't I don't know where they're at, so okay. they could very well be invited. Okay. All right, I'm asking because I'm looking for job opportunities, and I would like for uh, and constituents in District 2 are asking for an opportunity beyond District 2 and throughout the city of Omaha. And in order for the city of Omaha to grow and prosper, then there has to be job opportunities throughout Omaha. And that includes in this area as well. If you are aware of anybody, I need surveyors, uh, drillers, and construction thank, thank observers. You. And I gave you my address. Please. Uh, I, we're, we're more than willing to hire somebody. <laughs> because also to that end, we have individuals that are going to school. And they need to be pointed in, in occupations and fields and trades in the areas in which are going to be impactful for them to provide food for their families and home and for their families, right? Yeah. So we need this information. So this is mm -hmm. the reason we're going down this <laughs> this area of conversation. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Harding. You're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Doug, um, thanks for bringing this forward. Uh, but I, I, this is a preliminary plan. Correct. Um, and the process would be that you, once this is passed, that you would go back and with all the recommendations or conditions uh, would have to be met before you bring this back as a final plan, correct? Correct. And that would have to go through planning board, which is a public process and would have a public meeting um, before it comes to the city council, probably a month or so after that, after that hurdle's been, been reached um, for a vote at that time for the final plat, correct? Uh, we've already been through the planning with the final plat. So it, it will be coming to us probably within the next month or so, correct? correct? Okay. But the HOA is the one who makes the app made the application. This, I mean, that's that's what we're doing here. So to address the who was contacted or not, um, my point of the, the public process being, you know, handled through planning board and, and city council, as well as the HOA is the one actually making the application. Um, I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. And uh, yeah, I think it's unfair to ask of you who's going to be doing the work when this hasn't even been approved yet, or um, you're not the one who makes the final decision on who the contractor is or who the subs are. So I appreciate you answering the questions, but I, I didn't think that that was, that's not necessarily, you, you know, you're not the one who necessarily needs to be making those, those answers because you're not the one making that decision. But I appreciate your, I appreciate your, um, your answers and, and time today. Thank you. Ms. Johnson, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. And I too would like to thank you um, for asking and answer, or answering those questions. Uh, but again, I'm, I'm, I realize what your uh, line of questioning should be, but I'll, as I always state, we always need to think with the end in mind. And so while that may not be necessarily true today, 
we know that in a month or so, we're gonna have this conversation about building a clubhouse. And at that time, we're gonna need to know or project, and in my case, in my constituents case, we'll need to be prepared, skilled up, to know what those opportunities are, what they look like, so that we can prepare to be available for those opportunities. So again, I appreciate you going over that with us and for the constituents that are listening on Zoom, they are now able, because they have advanced knowledge that in a month or two, more importantly down the road, that these things are going to be made available for opportunity outside of District 2, but on a broader base throughout the city of Omaha. So I appreciate you on your patience and allowing that opportunity because education is what's going to drive the needle to get individuals out of poverty for the city of Omaha. Thank you. Well, and let me add, this is a, it will be a plat at the time they're selling lots to <coughs> make money to help pay for the clubhouse. I don't know the s status of when the clubhouse would actually be built. And we'll get that information in a month or so, but these questions <laughs> um, will allow others to begin to see opportunities down the road regarding what will become available in the city of Omaha. And that's the line of questioning here. So thank you again. Thank you. No further lights. Is there a motion? Second. Motion and a second. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Item 8 is approved 7 to 0. Item 9, a resolution to approve the preliminary plat for Purple Martin Hill, located northwest of 180th Street and Purple Martin Parkway. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Public hearing and vote on number 9 is today. Proponents, please. Good afternoon. I'm Denise Geringer, Executive Director at Sheltering Tree. Um, D-E-N-I-S-E-G-E-H-R-I-N-G-E-R. -E -E um, our address at Sheltering Tree is 7220 Ames Circle in Omaha. Thank you. I have slides. Can I share slides? Okay. Uh, you can pull up the arm there. And... Is it electronic or is it uh, a hard copy? Just on flash drive. Flash drive. Okay. Yeah, he'll help you. <coughs> Uh, thank you again for uh, is carving out time for us today. This is Sheltering Tree. Um, we build apartments for adults with developmental disabilities to help them live um, independently and uh, be engaged in their community, and above all, to be self-determined with their lives. Uh, Sheltering Tree um, is a nonprofit organization. Um, we are trying to meet the need for the significant uh, deficit in housing for adults with developmental disabilities. Um, there's a tremendous gap, and uh, we are trying to um, fill that as best we can as we move forward with our projects. Um, we are dedicated to serving people in the Omaha metro area with developmental disabilities through supportive and safe apartment communities, and it does empower our adults to be self-determined and be engaged within their community. Um, apartment Living, um, provides uh, we provide consumer-controlled apartments for our adults with uh, developmental disabilities. This means that they can hire or bring in whatever supports they need or if whatever supports they choose from whatever provider agencies they choose to provide supports within their apartment um, based on their level of need. Each tenant has their own rent-subsidized apartment that does include a living room, kitchen, bedroom, and bathroom, and all are designed to accommodate aging in place. Um, most all of our residents used subsidized housing vouchers to afford their rent. The need across the country um, is significant. Um, we know that 83% of our adults with developmental disabilities don't receive public supports for housing, and so it is a crisis around the country. Only 2% of adults with developmental disabilities in our whole country um, receive um, supports in housing similar to what we do. Um, in Nebraska, our residential waiting list is approximately 2,500, which just changed recently. It was at 3,500 um, offers were made recently. And we know that as the folks age into um, being able to, to receive those services, that number will continue to climb. Currently, our average wait for residential supports through um, waiver services from DHHS is approximately seven years. Um, Sheltering Tree maintains a waiting list of over 200 individuals looking for this type of apartment community um, where they can live um, independently with agency over their own lives. Just a quick review for those of you that are familiar with Maslow's hierarchy of needs. It's really hard to receive that 
um, pinnacle without having those physiological and safety needs um, and basic needs met, um, along with um, having um, connection to your community and belongingness. A little history, our founder, Shirley McNally, um, and her family um, founded this because they had a son with Down syndrome who they wanted to be able to have some agency over his own life and to be able to live um, uh, a safe, um, uh, wonderful life, uh, well, really with just basic needs when they're no longer able to, to um, provide that care for them. Um, the McNally's brought expertise in real estate law and background with the Department of uh, Housing and Urban Development, and this um, was where the concept was conceived. Um, we currently have two locations um, successfully operating in the Omaha metro area. Our first location is in Bellevue, where we have 10 apartment units with one live-in resident assistant. And our second is on the, in the Benson area, um, where we have 22 apartment units um, with uh, two live-in uh, resident assistants. Our apartments are for adults with developmental disabilities. Um, they have amenities that uh, help support them within their lives. Um, controlled access entry, live, work, play community rooms, on-site laundry. Um, we have an activities director who um, provides activities um, should our residents choose to participate. There's a meal plan available, accessible design, pedestrian-oriented locations. Most of our folks don't drive, so this allows them the ability to walk to where they need to go for basic needs. I'm talking fast to try and not take up too much of your time, but if I'm getting, getting uh, too speed, too, too much speed talk in here, just let me know. Um, health and wellness spaces, life skills training program, therapeutic garden. Um, we do have the tenant assistants that live alongside our residents and we use a life loop communication system so that their guardians and parents can also have an idea of um, how um, they are participating within their community um, that they live in. Qualifying characteristics include a, any adult that has a developmental disability. Um, Sheltering Tree has four core values, safety, affordability, community, and self-determination. Safety, of course, is important for our adults that are vulnerable, um, and it is important that um, we have that at the forefront of what we do. Affordability, of course, because our folks tend to um, live off of their Social Security disbursement of $841 a month. Um, as you know, most cases, that is the cost of rent, so using the housing subsidies allows them to pay a third of their um, income as their rent. Um, allowing them, them to make their own choices about what food they'd like to eat and what uh, activities they'd like to um, participate in and when they need clothing, et cetera. Um, community is extraordinarily important. Most of our folks, um, you'll hear it referred to as falling off the cliff um, when they um, leave the high school or um, environment, the school system, simply because there's not um, the opportunity for them to connect with others based on a number of different deficits. Um, but um, community is extremely important, um, and so we make sure that there's all, many opportunities for our individuals to connect and participate within the community at Sheltering Tree and the wider community as well. And then last but not least is self-determination. It is very important that our adults um, get to make their own decisions about their own world. Um, when they have agency over their own lives, they're happy folks, and they live peacefully along um, with everyone else in the community. Um, we currently have a project under construction in the Papillion um, Shadow Lake area. This is our biggest community yet. We will have 24 uh, unit, uh, two 24 unit apartment buildings. Currently it's um, under construction on 72nd and Ponderosa Drive in Papillion. This uh, location was advantageous because it is with walking distance to Shadow Lake Town Center. So folks can walk there for basic needs, for employment, um, for entertainment and so forth. Um, most importantly, it will offer 44 adults with developmental disabilities a chance to live self-determined lives. Um, the project that we are hoping to build in Elkhorn will be a replica of this project that we have um, going currently in the Papillion area. Um, the future uh, Elkhorn project is what I'm here to talk to you about. Um, we were fortunate to be gifted 20 acres of land uh, from the Royal Johnson Family Trust, whose family farmstead is adjacent to the property that they have donated to us. Um, and we uh, know we already have uh, uh, more than enough individuals seeking apartments in this area um, looking to live in these apartments. This is a rendering of the apartment co uh, communities. Um, it's two buildings, just like that, directly across the drive from each other. Um, they are one floor, they are um, designed to age in place, and they're accessible, fully accessible. This is the area of um, town. You can see there's 180th Street there, and Purple Martin Parkway comes around this way. Um, this is the donor's land. Here is a junior high, and here is a grade school. Um, this is the neighborhood that we'll be um, building across the street from. This is where we will have um, our um, sheltering tree location. Um, we did hold a neighborhood meeting. Um, we were able to um, really answer some questions um, with the neighbors and um, uh, get some ideas and input from them. And um, we've got some positive support from the neighbors, and we really appreciate that. This is just a little bit closer uh, view of uh, the location that we're talking about right here. 
believe that's an old drawing. Um, this is a, this is the rendering here with the um, landscaping. Um, you can see where the, the buildings will be oriented on the property. Um, we're quiet, we're well kept, um, and we fit into most areas. Our buildings are built without debt. We have a number of uh, philanthropic organizations in the city of Omaha that have provided us capital funding, um, as well as NIFA funding. We have an application with NIFA currently for this location. And NIFA has um, provided uh, tax credits for um, two of our previous projects, both the project in Benson and the project in, Bel in uh, excuse me, Papillion. Our project in um, uh, Bellevue was an 811 HUD project. So I see we have some lights on. I think I'll be summarized and then see what questions yep. we might have. You bet. Selden ma maintains our property and our tagline is independent but not alone because that is extremely important for those um, adults that we serve um, with developmental disabilities. It's a list of our board members. Um, we have uh, worked with the staff um, at the planning department and we accept the conditions that they have uh, brought for forward. Um, we would appreciate any support that you would um, be able to provide and I welcome any questions. Thank you. Any other proponents today that want to speak? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. Mr. Harding, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I'll first start with, uh, you know, we, we talked earlier about um, when we're working in the city, and I first became aware of this when I was working out of the city. I, um, I was in a small town in Iowa, and I ran into to John Tucker there at a hamburger stand, and, um, and he told me about this project and that, um, that it was going to be coming before the, the planning board in, in the near future, and, and could I meet with uh, Jill Rotella and, and Denise, and, and we did, and, and it's such a great project. Um, I'm, I'm, it, it's it's awe-inspiring, it's, um, and as you pointed out, what happens with a lot of these these young adults is is they they age out of um, high school and and then there's they want to have a sense of, of self and 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 belonging and purpose and this really gives them that opportunity and through the the incredible philanthropic community that we have here in Omaha and the hard work. Um, that you and, and your board have done to, to get it to this point and, and, and having the land donated for, for this location. And I know there, there's been a little hair on it to figure out how what the land use and some of the, the uh, conditions that go along with that. But um, I, think the, um, uh, I, I think the end product is, is something that's great. We need it in our community and, um, and I, wholly supportive of this and, and appreciate all the work that, that you and, and, and the board have, have done to get it to this point. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Melton, you're recognized. Yeah, thanks. I remember, and you know, everything's before COVID and after COVID, but before COVID, I went to the, the grand opening of the shelter tree off the 72nd military. Mm -hmm. I was invited by a, a young man um, who was getting one of the first units there and, and his family. And he gave me the tour. He was so proud of his place. And I mean, he had his own apartment and look, he had his countertops were really nice. I mean, these, these living areas also, they're very nice. I, they might be small, which is good. I mean, enough to, for them to take care of, but it was wonderful. And the pride that he had, it, he was just beaming. Um, and then, I don't know, it looks like, a, I mean, a great place where they have the ability to have community in the center. There's rides and buses and activities. I mean, it, it's not just a place for disabled young adults to live, but a place for them to thrive because of all the different opportunities that they're, that they're able to, to get and take them to jobs. I mean, because these young adults may be disabled, they're working. They're proud of what they do. They're proud of themselves. And I think this also gives them independence, which then comes with pride and self-worth. And I just think that the, the shelter tree, I'm so glad that you're able to expand these all over. And I hope that one day you're able, that sheltering tree is able to provide the 2,500 
that are needed in our community. But thank you for keeping tackling it, you know, a hundred places at a time and that you keep doing it all over. So I just appreciate the work and it, just a wonderful, wonderful place. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rowe. Thank you, Mr. Feskerson. I too want to echo uh, Brinker and Amy's thoughts. I, at Millard, um, in my other work at Millard Lumber, we uh, participate in a program through the Millard Public Schools called the Young Adult Program. And it's a similar uh, program, not uh, for housing, but for job development and just helping uh, teach job skills, how to show up on time and how to do a task. And, and I've developed many relationships with the men and women that have come through our lumber yard. And I, I would say almost to 100%, and Benny probably is 100%, um, they want respect and they want to have a sense of purpose and independence. And so an opportunity like this is means the world to the friends that I've made um, working at Miller's Lumber. And so I, I just wanted to echo uh, the thoughts too and say thank you for uh, doing the work to help these, these folks out, so appreciate it. It's a passion project for me. I'm a parent of an adult with a developmental disability myself. So uh, this has become more of a vocation um, than a job. So I appreciate it, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bigley. Thanks, Mr. President. Denise, I, I'll be brief in my comments. My colleagues have already touched on the great <clears throat> admiration we have and the thanks we have for you. I'll be absolutely supporting this today. And you're given dignity and, and ownership and respect to these men and women. There's nothing greater on earth to have that feeling that this is your place, you're respected, and we're building this for you. Uh, Councilmember Melton gave a great story there of the one, and that's, I know when this goes forward, there's gonna be more stories like that. And we can't thank you enough for your passion for this. So I will be more than happy to support this and thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Yes, um, Denise, thank you. The presentation that you provided us with on this project was uh, extremely lovely and thoughtful. Uh, it did open um, my eye up to the fact that this pro these programs exist. And I would also um, like to um, share um, the uh, likeness of this preliminary plat um, that we're voting on for here, as it has similar, uh, similar um, features or what we voted on on the previous item number eight, which was a preliminary plat. So with that being said, I would then encourage you and others like you to consider North Omaha for opportunities to build such programs as this because it's very much needed. It's in our strategic plan, ma'am. Very ma much needed. It's in our strategic plan. We're aware that um, disability um, occurs in every area of our city, for every um, ethnic group, every socioeconomic group, and it is in our strategic plan to to look to underserved areas as our fifth project and sixth project as we move forward. Thank you, and I definitely will support this. Thank you, appreciate it. Mr. Palermo. Thank you, Mr. President. See, I, just, I wanted to follow the string around here. I wasn't gonna break it before we got to the president, so. Oh, now it's pressure. Pressure, <laughs> pressure. Uh, love the presentation. I've seen it at the, when you give it to the planning board as well. So, second time. Uh, such a need, as you heard from everybody here today. Uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. Now let's go ahead and call for the vote, because I support it too. <laughs> <laughs> The motion, I'll second. Roll call. Harding, yes. Johnson, yes. Melton, yes. Palermo, yes. Rowe, yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Item nine is approved seven to zero. Thank you. Item, item 10, a resolution to approve the preliminary plat for Exarbon Center, replat five, located northwest of 70th and Pine Streets. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Public hearing and vote on number 10 is today. Proponents, please. Kyle Vole, ENA Consulting Group, 10909 Mill Valley Road. The, uh, I'm the engineer on the project here on behalf of the applicant. Uh, this is a replat of three uh, existing lots. They're, they're building addition that they're proposing at the senior living facility. Um, has some minor adjustments in the, uh, the outlines of the footprints of the building. So this is a, a adjustment of the interior property lines. Be happy to answer any of the questions you might have. Thank you. Any other proponents today? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. Roll call. Harding, yes. Johnson, yes. Melton, yes. Palermo, yes. 
Roe, Bagley, Mr. President. Yes. Item 10 is approved, seven to zero. Item 11, a resolution to approve a special use permit to allow small group living in the R4 district located at 4527 North 37th Street, Planning Board and Planning Department, recommend approval. Public hearing and vote is on, on number 11 is today. Proponents, please. Uh, I'm Carthus Rowe Jr., uh, 4527 North 37th Street. Um, I'm here to answer any questions. Thank you. Any other proponents today? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. Ms. Johnson, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm sorry I didn't get your name, sir. Cartel Sherrell. Sherrell. Last name is Sherrell? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Can you tell me a little bit about your program, um, your uh, small group living here at this location? Can you? Give me uh, a uh, scenario of what, what you're offering and how it buy, uh, provides a benefit for the area. Absolutely. So we help people uh, basically like second chance. So they come, you know, I run auxiliary house transitional living. So uh, <clears throat> I work directly with uh, like mental health counselors and, you know, help people, you know, get back into society uh, create goals, help, you know, uh, help them get back forth to work, start jobs, so on and so forth. And so um, <coughs> do you do any, um, what type of um, assistance do you get from Douglas County, um, from other agencies to help uh, put this program together? So we work with uh, 180 RAP program, you know, we work with uh, CS Rise, you know, so, and we give them transportation, uh, help them fill out applications. So do you have computers and things like Absolutely, that in the home? Yes. So we have computers in the home, Wi-Fi. Uh, do, yeah. you, um, do you um, provide any, um, support as far as um, me um, mental support, mental health, any of that, is that available to the Correct. tenant? <coughs> we do work directly with the counselor and on-site management, so it's 24-hour care. 24-hour care? Yes. And um, were the neighbors in this area notified of this small uh, group facility? Yes. And what are some of the comments or some of the concerns, if they have any, um, about the uh, facility? They're looking to, um, you know, approve it. So, so you haven't gotten any negative no feedback? No negative. Um, so you've knocked on doors? Yes. You've gone into the community to Correct. gather support? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So and I even handed out, you know, my card, my contact information. I mean, the only... <clears throat> only response I've got was a neighbor, a neighboring owner uh, was looking to, you know, join me in this venture, so. And about how many bedrooms do you have and? So at this location, I also own another location that's uh, moving along. So at this location is, it will be five bed, two bath. Okay. And about how long will they be able to stay at this facility? Is it for a year or a two-year program? But normally it's a uh, six-month program. Uh -huh. So we got graduates. Uh, the other location, you know, I have about <clears throat> eight graduates so far, you know, uh -huh. so. So my final question to you, what, what, what motivated you to get into this, in this, into this type of business? Well, I feel like I grew up in these areas, mm -hmm. so, and I feel like the biggest problem is, is people don't know how to, they don't know how to set goals, you know, and they don't, they don't feel like they have a helping hand, you know, so I want to just basically be there to show that I'm like you, and we can do this, you know, we can have a second chance, you know, we could be a a member of this community. Yeah. So have you had a lot of successes here? Yes. 
Okay. So, all right, I'll we'll go ahead and support this. Um, I move to approve. A uh, second. No further lights. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Item 11 is approved 7 to 0. Thank you. Thank you. Items 12 and 13 can be considered together for property located at 4837 North 90th Street. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Yeah. Item 12, a resolution to approve a special use permit to allow automotive sales in the CC District. And 13, an ordinance to amend the boundaries of the MCC overlay district to incorporate this property into that district. Public hearing and vote on items 12 and 13 are today. Proponents, please. Good afternoon, council members. I'm Mark Sanford. I'm the architect for the project. Uh, I am assisting Fran Mehta to uh, start doing some auto sales. He's currently doing auto repair at this location, and he's looking to beautify uh, 90th Street with this uh, facility. I'm here to answer any questions or any concerns. Thank you. And your address, please, just for the record. Uh, 1306 North 162nd Street, Mark Sanford Architects. Thanks. Any other proponents today? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. This um, case is in my district, but I agree with Mr. Sanford. I think it'll be an improvement to the property there. And while we're doing that, it also adopts the major commercial corridor overlay district, which I think is a positive as well. So I would support a motion to approve. Second. Motion and a second. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Thank you very much for your support. Item 14 to consider a Class C liquor license for Lemon Drop Lounge located at 5423 South 36th Street. A's request from the applicant to withdraw the application. There's a requ request to withdraw. Is there a motion? Motion and a second. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed 7 to 0. Item 15 to consider a Class CK liquor license for the Mill Coffee and Tea located at 3105 Leavenworth Street. A's communication from the Planning Department regarding permits for the outdoor area. B's communication and support. Public hearing and vote on number 15 is today. Proponents, please. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Dan Sloan, uh, D-A-N-S-L-O-A-N. I live at 405 South 28th Street in Lincoln. Um, Tamara Sloan, same address. Um, we are the owners of The Mill Coffee and Tea. Um, we have four locations in Lincoln, two of which have um, alcohol permits. Um, we've operated those for about five years. We've been in business for well over 40 years. Um, we employ Roughly 100 people. Um, we're looking to add probably 40 to 50 more when we come to Omaha. Um, and we would, um, we really like having alcohol in, in conjunction with the, the coffee shop. We're not looking to be a bar. Don't invite your 21 year old there for their birthday. Um, we do craft cocktails. We do um, kind of craft beer, um, value wines, um, kind of your neighborhood hangout. We like to think of ourselves as that third place you can come in and meet somebody interesting and spend some time, maybe get some work done. Great, thank you. Any other proponents that want to speak today? Seeing none, any opponents? <laughs> Public hearings closed. Mr. Bagley, you're recognized. Thanks, Mr. President. Louise? Uh, Public hearings closed. If someone wants to call you up, they can. I got up. Yeah. You did not get up in time, and I, just gave, I think I gave plenty of time. Perhaps we'll call you up. Perhaps we'll call you up. Mr. Bagley, the floor is yours. Thanks, Mr. President. Dan and Tamara, appreciate you being here today and choosing to open up a coffee shop that's in my district. And I, I had a nice chat with Tamara this morning um, as I drive by there the last several months, the hard work and construction that's been going on. Mm -hmm. And that's the old Alamar uniform that moved a little bit to the west, I believe. Correct. And it's the transformation that is incredible the investment you're making and as i talked to tamara this morning you've been in business since 1975 is that correct correct we think so it all right drifts back. <laughs> and this is, is this your fifth store yes right yeah, and so this is the first one outside of lincoln i know we're redundant but i'm just making sure yep i'm we're up to speed when we talked this morning what i've read um so tell me a little bit about the the patio that you have, you said it's on the east side of the 
property right mm -hmm. so what you're going to have a little outdoor music can you tell me a little bit about how that'll look yep very friend family friendly events um small scale um again it's something that you can come have a glass of wine my mom could have her tea and it's just something we can all do together usually we bring out a grill um, have one of our chefs come and cook for us so mm -hmm. pretty low-key and fun yeah we've done a series of those at one of our locations in lincoln and it's been very successful it's um it's a free show open to anybody um always do food a um, little bit of alcohol a little bit of coffee tea that sort of thing um, and very much designed to be family kid and pet friendly and what would be the hours of if you have that outdoor music what time are you looking to have that typically what's your time frame to look in you know we our demographic we are our demographic for that um, it is not um, young and youthful and vibrant yes, absolutely right. absolutely the hours we normally do are food starts at five music starts at six we're done by nine um, it's not a an all-night party by any means so fair to say that my friend and colleague the fester tones aren't going to be blasting out till midnight the drummer down here <laughs> but it'll be nice acoustical or whatever as mm -hmm. I say that John Denver crowd I'm all for that yep. um, and how many people do you think you'll employ there at full staff once you get rolling what are you looking at um, we employ a lot of part-time staff it's the perfect job for a college kid um, our will probably run probably eight to ten full-time and then probably 30 to 50 part-time people, depending on how many shifts they carry. A, you know, a, a, a three-shifter versus a five-shifter, you know, your body count kind of changes from week to week. Sure. And what are the hours of operation you're looking at typically for the, you know, Sunday we, we through We will Saturday? have a drive-through, which oh. will be our first drive-through, so we're kind of excited. Will that yeah. be on the south end, or where will that be? Um, yeah, the south end. Okay. Right. Yeah, we'll you'll loop around end. behind the building, um, enter off Leavenworth, and then exit onto 31st. Okay, and what hours are you looking at for your mm -hmm. operation? Probably 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Okay. Uh, and my good friend, Councilman Palermo, he gives it, I, I think he covered the 32nd infomercial for this great new establishment. I certainly am looking forward to going there as I meet, like all of us do with constituents. I'll invite my colleagues to come down if they want to try a new coffee shop. But I'll look forward to getting down there, and I know my kids. That's a great developing area as you go around St. Mary's Head and West mm -hmm. here. And, um, and, and Tamara, you talked a little bit about a wall you were going to do in the front there. Can you yep, just explain just a, that a little um, bit? We want to put up a, a small brick wall to be able to kind of cushion off Leaven Leavenworth Street, just give it some of that sound barrier. A little buffer. Um, yeah, a little bit of a buffer. Mm -hmm. So that way the whole east side and the south side will be open, but that north side against Leavenworth, it's a little kind of a fast traffic. Yeah. And the wall so. will probably actually have a uh, like a wrought iron gate in it, so mm -hmm. it's not like a solid a big barrier there. It's more kind of visual. People really enjoy kind of the perception that they're invisible, but then they still want to see out, and so it gives them a little bit of that screening. And, and when are you looking to open? Uh, well, we're, we're hoping to go for permits tomorrow. And Hands all you back there. <laughs> ETI is <laughs> promising, and so um, as long as that goes forward, we hope sometime in November. Right. We have most of our um, kind of ducks in a row as far as the construction goes. As soon as we get the, the permits, we're ready to hit the ground running. Okay, and you, you have my card and my number, and I want to be Mr. Fanslow's back there in, in planning if there's any issues with permits, and I, I can do the best I can to help you, but I... I think you covered the infomercial, what you're looking at. If you wanted to add anything else, please, the floor is yours. Um, I think one of the important things that we've found in all of our locations, we just opened, I don't know if you've heard about Lincoln's Telegraph District, but um, that the Smiths have developed with Speedway and Allo and Nelnet. And um, one of the things, they we, we go in early, and it's kind of a developing, turning neighborhood in, on Leavenworth, mm -hmm. and um, try to develop that sense of community around us. and. Um, we've questioned why we deserve to be in business or go into a new area for to open a business and and that's one of the things that that we've focused on most is really our sense of community that we bring around us so welcoming in the community and giving them a place to stay and be and go mm -hmm. and um you know participate in well thanks for again for opening up in omaha and we're looking forward to the jobs and your um, commitment to the community and your your um, just being a great asset for that part of town that's really really developing and I'll look forward to getting down there myself several times so thanks for being here I'll absolutely be supporting this today thanks Mr. President Thank and one note that it is subject to, to permits when we do subject have that motion is that a motion from you it is. Yeah. okay I'm sorry I apologize Mr. President I was ahead of you 
Well, I just want to say I am just so happy that I can get my co that cold iced coffee that mm -hmm. you have. I don't have to wait to go to Lincoln to get it. Yep. <laughs> I have a law firm location in the apothecary right across oh, the street from nice. you. Yeah. And actually, I'll beg Sean Reagan, who's my partner that's in that building, when he's coming to Omaha, get a cooler and go get me one of the mill cold coffee. <laughs> Sometimes, though, he'll end up drinking it before he gets to that's, We need to send you, the, send you the, the full strength version. You just dilute it when you get here. <laughs> that's exactly. You make your own drink. Now I have one here. I can just go through the drive through So I'm just so happy you're here. I spent, I can't tell you how many hours I spent studying in that location too when I was in Lincoln. So I think there's yeah. decades of UNL grads mm -hmm. that recall um, meeting people to study and especially before finals and having yeah. group studies right there near, in, I don't know if, was it, is that the original mill? Yeah. Is the one right down there? Mm -hmm. In the Haymarket. Um, so that's there. the one I re remember. I don't know if it was all fond memories because I'm like cramming for finals, but yeah. um, you definitely, your coffee sustained me and I'm so happy that you're We get be more here engagement anymore. pictures taken because they met their husband. <laughs> oh, I bet you did. Mail than you can imagine. So. I can only imagine. Anyway, so glad you're going to be here in Omaha. Thanks. So Thanks. I will I will be visiting frequently. We're a little different than most of the coffee shops around here in that we're large really locations are. and try to make it cozy and feel like you can really come and stay. Um, it's part of our that's how I felt when I was down at the the mill down in the Haymarket and I look forward to having you here so thank you thank you, thank you Mr. Rowe thank you I uh, I too want to echo those sentiments I spent a lot of my adult life in Lincoln and had a little business just around the corner from you on uh, 8th and N or 9th and N and so I spent a lot of time a lot of business meetings in the mill at 8th and P and, in, and really enjoyed learning how to uh, enjoy a good cup of coffee at the mill and the, the roasters right there on site and we yep. just you know it was really an enjoyable experience and um, I really look forward to you being in Omaha as well I did give a shout out to Hardy earlier and I that's you know mm -hmm. I still like Hardy but <laughs> I learned my love of coffee from uh, from the mill well, there's so. always room for more so. <laughs> mr. Bagley you're recognized you. mr. president Luis if you want to come up now thank you mm -hmm. best of luck thank you thanks Luis Jimenez, 2709 Dewey Avenue. I guess I can't sit close enough. <clears throat> uh, I was encouraged to be here and speak in opposition by Di Farrow. She's an artist who has seen her neighborhood be demolished, beautiful buildings disappearing year after year. When a building is up to be raised, die goes and sketches them before they are gone. <clears throat> she hates it. She is angry and didn't want to be here to spare your in, uh, spare you the, her insult. Um, and she does not think that the area needs another liquor license. So that, that is the basis of our opposition, that this is a, um, a, a, a liquor license. Um, so the, the area is uh, kind of, de a lot of people think there's shoddy development and nothing to your business, you know, nothing against your business, but uh, the, uh, the development that's going on has been shoddy. There's empty lots that developers promised that they were going to redevelop, but haven't developed. So, I mean, you, you guys are offering a lot of compliments to the development of this area. I encourage you, Mr. Begley, to speak with Di Farrow and like-minded individuals in, uh, th in that neighborhood. Uh, they, um, um, they, they are not, they're not uh, here presently you know, to voice the opposition because you ha this council hasn't listen to them as uh, year after year. These perennial residents that stay in the community that have not left but are still there, they don't need another coffee shop. They don't need uh, a new concept with a liquor license. They need, uh, uh, they need like a grocery store that isn't Nuestro uh, Mercado. It, that kind of grocery store isn't um, like expansive. This is a food area, a uh, food desert area. 
they need an expansive grocery store, like a baker's, like a Hy-Vee. Uh, so if you can get that kind of development in the area, that'd be good. But a, another liquor license in the area is not needed. Um, you know, you, 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 Amy Melton's gonna come here once the, um, the, the shop is up. That, that is the story of what's going on. You're, people from the community are being overlooked and, what, and now you're listening to people from out west, from Lincoln, telling you guys what's gonna happen in, in this uh, neighborhood. So I appreciate that I was able to come here because it's actually a long time coming to tell you that. Because when I canvassed for you, Mr. Wegley, I heard I got an ear, uh, earful. Not just that you're looking from older Irish women. Okay, I I heard the complaints of of um, the demolishment that's going on in the area. So I encourage you to uh, speak with Di Farrow so that you have a different perspective and you can have a holistic. Excuse me, I'm talking. Uh, you have a more holistic view of that area. Miss, your previous, um, rep the previous representative here found, I'm, I'm pretty sure he found it tough to, you know, represent everybody in that community. Make an effort to listen to the variety of people that live there and not just people that want to move in and offer, you know, a, a different concept, which people aren't asking for. Thank you. Mr. President, um, Tamara and Dan, can you come up for one second, please, just to verify and reiterate to me, how many jobs will be in this establishment here? How many are you looking at? We're projecting 40 to 50 jobs. 40 to 50 jobs. Um, I, I would like to address some of the comments that were made. Um, three of our stores are in old buildings. Um, a number of years ago, we won the Historic Preservation Award in Lincoln for our Haymarket Mill for the renovations we've done there. The building we're going into is a 20s Art Deco building. It's a beautiful building. We've saved the wood floor. We've reclaimed a couple of skylights. We really respect the neighborhoods and the buildings that we go into. We have no interest in raising that building and building something else there. We are very much part of our community. Um, I, I appreciate the, the concerns with gentrification and everything, but we are very much part of our community. Um, I, don't, I, I don't know how to say it any clearer than that, that we're not coming in from Lincoln telling you how to run your city or saying that we're you know, going to change your world or anything. We provide, when Tamara said we had to figure out why we deserve to exist, when, when we were expanding about five years ago, we really did sit down and have that conversation with ourselves as to why we exist. And what we came up with, right or wrong, was that what we provide more than coffee is community. We, com we provide that melting pot where everybody is welcome and where you can really kind of come in and meet somebody interesting. Um, the way Tamara says it, it's a, it's a place where your grandmother can come and have tea and feel like she really belongs and your daughter can come in and have a smoothie and know that she really belongs. The alcohol piece is a complement to that. We don't see it as our primary piece of business. It's allowed us to have that after work group come in. Dan can have a glass of wine, I can have a latte, and we're just happy as can be, and it's never overdone. We're not a Bud's Bar. Mm -hmm. We're not looking to do that kind of business. Um, we're something much more um, gathering place. Mm -hmm. so. Thank you for answering that for me. And, and again, best of luck to you. I, I just want to say 40 to 50 jobs, uh, it was mentioned by Luis. There's a lot of things that I campaigned on, and one of them was jobs. Mm -hmm. So you're, I'm assuming somebody from Lincoln's not going to drive from Lincoln and work at 6 in the morning. You don't have to answer that. But um, actually, people that live in my district are going to be maybe outside the district, my colleagues, Councilmember Johnson mentions jobs often. We all do. Mm -hmm. there, 40 to 50 jobs in a thriving area that is being rebuilt. That building, what you're doing, as I said, it's been 
magnificent seeing the transformation of that area. Mm -hmm. So again, the jobs that you're bringing, the commitment you have to Lincoln, you're bringing it to Omaha now. If anybody out there is listening wants to bring jobs to District 3, they're welcome here. In Blackstone, where my good friend Luis works, there's a great hamburger stop on 41st and Farnham Street that he works at. I've been there. I took a couple of my colleagues there for lunch. Great hamburgers, Luis. Great fries. I love it. Smiling face when you're working there. I want to see a Luis or a Joan or Margaret working at this coffee shop that offers the same, affords the same ability to have a job. My niece and her fiance are mad because they just lived off 31st and Pacific right behind you guys. And they moved to Chicago a month ago. They graduated. They were so mad, they were saying, Uncle Danny, why didn't you open this place up when we were going to school here? We could have walked up there in the morning and got coffee, studied on the patio, go see Uncle Danny listening to John Denver remake on the, on the stage and all the, on the patio. So. That's all I got. I appreciate your time coming down, and I wish you the best of luck. Thank, Thank you. you. We appreciate your Mr. Support. Hardin. Thanks. Real quickly, I was going to point out the same thing. Dan and, and Tamara, you don't need to stand anymore, but thank you. But, I mean, just looking at um, looking at your other locations online and, and seeing what you've done, I, that was one of the points I was going to bring up, too. I think what, what you've done, I think you, you have a true sense of coming in and, and like you've been there for 50 years already. I mean, you, you, you've you done a tremendous job architecturally with, with your other locations. I've driven by this site while it's under construction, and I see you're doing the same thing there, too. I think the Zolkin family was the one who, who owned the, the Alamar shop there. I don't know if they own the property, but um, having Actually, been... the property owner, John Heine, is here. And oh, hi, John. Well, but previously, yeah. before John. He's truly the yeah. one who's huge, huge, huge yeah. support and visionary in the redeveloping of this building. And well, it, will in, in the area into, it will go into the rest of the neighborhood. Yeah, I mean, you've got the triangle honest. that's across the street. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it, 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 it's, I, I appreciate what you have done and what you plan to do to the facility so that it feels like it's it's been there for, mm -hmm. for a long time. But yep. I, that was something I wanted to point out. And I know it's been addressed by others mm -hmm. as well. So welcome. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. Um, I was able to take a look at the attachment here and I saw the beautiful um, information that you provided in your SWOT analysis, which means that you took the time to do your research, do your homework, and you did do some due diligence to see uh, what you could offer the Omaha market. Very impressed with that. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for including that. That gives me some background or some information that I can uh, resonate with and also um, um, promote as you know as you are going to be a business here in Omaha. I definitely want to advocate the business. Um, this certainly gives me the information that I need to do so. Invite your constituents to come apply. We <laughs> love diversity, please. <laughs> Thank yes. you. And then also, John, I think I would suggest or think that um, you uh, probably uh, coached them into coming here. And mm -hmm. No, you, 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 di you didn't help. You didn't have an ulterior motive. No, we fell in love with John and the building. So, yeah, <laughs> All right, well, I, I'm going to give you thanks anyway uh, for the encouragement. I'm looking forward to the uh, opportunity to come in and see what you have to offer. Thank you. Mr. Palermo. Thank you, Mr. President. <clears throat> I know I've been warned not to say anything, but it's too late. Um, welcome to the Omaha City Council. Do not leave with a sour taste in your mouth. <laughs> oh, no. This is exactly what we need in the city of Omaha um, for the exact same reasons that you're doing it. And I'm not trying to get the sixth location in District 4, but I kind of <laughs> am. Um, we don't usually talk this long on liquor licenses, uh, but I, I see and I read and I looked up and I quickly uh, Google searched and keep doing what you're doing. We need this in the community, Thank you. especially in, in, in pockets where it's necessary for exactly what you're bringing to the city. So mm -hmm. I don't know what the, the vote will be today. It's a, a rough crowd up here, but uh, <laughs> either way, thanks for investing in Omaha. Thank, Thank you. you. There's a motion, a second, subject to permits. Roll call. Harding, Aye. Johnson, yes. Melton, yes. Palermo, yes. Rowe, yes. Bigley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. I am leaving, but I'm actually Nope. Nope, Larry. Nope. Nope.
Next item, please, Madam Clerk. Item 16, to consider a Class C liquor license for camp located at 3618 Farnham Street, Suite C. Public hearing and vote on number 16 is today. We have the applicant by Zoom. Mr. Padavina will get you off mute here in a second. Was he here? Hello, Michael Sanchez here, okay. 7903 Heritage Circle. Happy to answer any questions. Great, thank you. Any other proponents? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Harding, yes. Johnson, yes. Melton, yes. Palermo, yes. Rowe, yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Item 16 is approved, 7 to 0. Item 17 to consider a Class CK liquor license for pulled barbecue located at 11036 Elm Street. Public hearing and vote on number 17 is today. Proponents, please. Uh, good afternoon. Wayne Knight, uh, 1614 South, 179th Street. Here to answer any questions you have. Uh, we're taking over the old uh, Hunger Block location in Rockford. So. Great. Thank you. Any other proponents today? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Harding. Johnson. Melton, yes. Palermo, yes. Rowe, yes. Bagley, Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Item 17 is approved, 7 to 0. Item 18 to consider a Class IK liquor license for Foxy Sushi, located at 18101 Chicago Street, Suite 108, is amendment to upgrade the application to Class CK license. Public hearing on vote on number 18 is today. Proponents, please. Uh, Mr. Mr. President, uh, Mike Kelly, 2804 South 87th Avenue. Uh, this, we're asking for a we're asking for an amendment, first of all, on this to make it a CK. They want to be able to sell, as now allowed by Nebraska law, to sell some drinks to go. Because the, the, they're a sushi place, they will sell the exotic drinks that you can't get just anywhere. So, of course, it's a very limited under Nebraska law how they do it, but that's why we need that amendment. Thank you. I'm here for any other questions you might have. Great. Any other proponents today? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Mr. Harding, you're recognized. Question. So it, in order to accommodate the request for the change from IK to CK, um, I assume we'll need an amendment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll make that amendment to change the um, class liquor license application from IK to CK. Okay. Second. There's a motion and a second. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Melton, yes. Palermo, yes. Rowe, yes. Bagley, Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Second. Roll call. Harding, Johnson, Melton, yes. Palermo, yes. Rowe, yes. Bagley, Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. <laughs> Item 19 to consider a class IK liquor license for Texas Day Brazil located at 1110 Capitol Avenue. Public hearing and vote on number 19 is today. Proponents, please. Uh, Mr. President, again, Mike Kelly, 2804 South 87th Avenue. Uh, this one, we have originally filed this without, this is a new corporation, but one of these Texas, Brazil type steakhouses coming in, Brazil. Uh, they were in about 18 states. This, they're new to Omaha, they're going in the cap, they'd like to go in the capital district. They asked, the, and I asked the commission, give a special permission to file without the manager app at the time because they didn't have one because they were about six months out in their construction. Commission graciously allowed me to do that, but of course that runs afoul of your ordinance. They have now filed a manager application, but rather send it to Lincoln today with no recommendation. I think maybe the best thing to do, uh, even though it will require me to come back during your budget hearings, uh, <laughs> uh, um, I think the best thing to do would be to lay it over for two weeks. I know you're not you know, meeting next week, but two weeks, uh, and then consider it then. That's a big and request for, to invite you back. What's that? That's a big request to invite you back. <laughs> <laughs> I might I might Zoom that one. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't know that, but it's filed. So it'll be coming in the ordinary course. It will certainly satisfy your ordinance. Okay. Thank you. Any other proponents today? Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. Ms. Johnson, you're recognized. Um, I move that we lay this over for two weeks. Um, I don't know that 
there will be some Tuesdays coming forward that we're not going to be in session. So when will that? September 13th. Motion to lay over until the 13th? Yes. And a second. Thank you. Roll call. Thank you. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Um, yes. Melton. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Consent agenda. Any member of the city council may cause any item placed on the consent agenda to be removed. Items removed from the consent agenda shall be taken up by the city council immediately following the consent agenda in the order in which they were removed unless otherwise provided by the city council rules of order. There's been a request to remove item number 24 from the consent agenda. So first we'll address um, items 20 through 23 and 25 through 31, which had their public hearings on August 23rd. Motion in a second. No further lights. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Item 24, an ordinance to approve a professional services agreement with WSP USA Inc. for professional engineering and public involvement services to assist the city in the creation of the Vision Zero Action Plan at a cost of $345,896.68. Public hearing on number 24 was held on August 23rd. I believe Ms. Johnson, you requested the removal, correct? Yes. The floor is yours. Good afternoon, how are you today? Good afternoon, Todd Fitzer with Public Works. Okay. Here for any questions you may have. Um, I just wanted to um, entertain the idea of what the process is for this um, opportunity for WSP USA Inc. Um, and um, I kind of just want to know for not only for this meeting, but also constituents in the room, outside of the room, um, to learn about the process of how these bids and how we come about as a city to select who we choose to, um, to provide services for the city. So okay. if you could give me a broad view of that um, or uh, as much as you can um, so that we can know how that process works. I would greatly appreciate it. Okay. This is our standard quality-based selection. So by that, we, we put out what's called an RFP or a request for proposal. Uh, in this particular case, we got seven uh, proposals back. There's a, a team of five in this case. Uh, myself is one. I'm the head of the selection committee with Public Works. There is, in this case, there was a member of Public Works and a member of Planning, a member from the mayor's office, and a citizen at large, which is appointed one of three appointees by the mayor's office who were on this selection committee. So we, we got seven proposals. We then ranked those proposals, and this is the same process we use for federal aid projects, projects that we are teamed with the DOT, projects that we do in our capital improvement program. It's, it's called quality-based selection, and it's very standard uh, for all of our projects. Once we have what we call a short list, in this case, we interviewed four out of those seven teams, that same panel of five, interviewed those four teams. There is no cost discussion. There is a rough scope. The, the firms have a rough idea what this is going to cost, but the cost factor is not part of the selection at this point. Once a firm is selected through a quality base, in other words, the five selection panel members vote and the highest quality firm is selected, we then go into scope negotiations. If we are unable to reach a satisfactory scope negotiation with the selected firm, we then have the ability to move to the second place firm if we could not reach a financial agreement with the first place firm. So in a nutshell, that's how this works. And it, it applies to public works projects across the board, including our CSO program, our transportation uh, improvement program. Uh, in this case, uh, the Vision Zero safety program, different things like that. So now would that, um, when we, um make the selection of who will get this. Um, do we put any uh, parameters in place in terms of um, a diversified um, group of people performing the service? Uh, can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, all of our firms have requirements and I, I can't give you the breakdowns on, on the numbers. I don't, I'm not intimately familiar with those breakdowns, but yes, we have uh, diversity requirements within there. Our, our contractors have a certain percentage that has to be met for emerging and small business programs and things like that that are within this program that is included. 
And so this, um, just so that I can give my community as well as the Omaha community a heads up, uh, when might they see some advertisement uh, seeking help to complete this task? Well, if you approve this today, we'll begin the process and they'll, they'll be working with local folks almost immediately. So I don't know specifically what they'll be advertising for uh, in public outreach, but they'll be going to, uh, as we discussed last week, different community events and things like that to gather information, working with local folks in that area. So it'll begin almost immediately. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. No further lights. Is there a motion? Move to second. Motion and a second. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. And 24 is approved, 7 to 0. The public hearings on agenda items 32 through 36 are today. If you wish to address the city council regarding these items, please come to the microphone, indicate the agenda item number you wish to address. Identify yourself by name, address, and who you represent, and if you are a proponent or an opponent. Seeing none, public hearings are closed. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Item 37, an ordinance to transfer permanent easements and land to Sanitary Improvement District 610 to construct a storm sewer. Public hearing on number 37 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 38, an ordinance to amend various sections of Chapter 55 of the Omaha Municipal Code to correct typographical errors and to add an exemption to maximum permitted sound created by emergency generators and clarifies perimeter of landscaping for urban design districts. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Public hearing on number 38 is today. Proponents, please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 39, an ordinance to approve an agreement with the Millard Public Schools for the city to provide no more than five associate school resource officers. Public hearing on number 39 is today. Proponents, please. See none, any opponents? Public hearings closed. Item 40, Recycle Coach appeals the rejection of their bid from July 13th, 2022 for recycling and solid waste calendar and notification service. We have a bid rejection appeal. A motion will be needed to allow or to deny the appeal. Uh, typically we hear from the department first on these items. Is there a department rec uh, representative here? Please come down. And then we do have the uh, uh, appellants by Zoom, who we'll get to next. Jim Key, City of Omaha Public Works Department. Um, this was a, a procurement to uh, obtain an app or software that would allow residents to subscribe to a service where they would get notifications for garbage collection or recycling collection for their week, as well as notifications of delays in service uh, or if an area had been missed. And so we put this procurement out. Um, this particular um, bidder uh, did not meet some of the qualifications that we were asking for. Uh, in particular, uh, in their correspondence that, that was on file, uh, we had specified a, a short code SMS text uh, requirement. Um, I guess the difference between a short code and a, and a long code is with a short code, you have one number that's going to be sent out, or one number that's going to be sending texts out to everybody. And so that would be a five to six digit number. It'll be, so if I, if I get that text, it's going to come from the same number that any, any other member of the public is going to receive. Uh, with, the, with a long code, it's basically a series of numbers that would look like, a, like it's originating from our area, or it could look like it's originating from our area. So the number that sends the text to me could be different than the number that sends the text to somebody else. Uh, it, 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 based upon the number of texts that we're sending out, it could range from 10 different numbers to five different numbers. It just kind of depends on your volume. So we found that the, the short code was a more efficient and more reliable and more consistent uh, messaging option for our residents. Um, it also wouldn't look like spam, and that's what we want to kind of avoid. So that's why we specified short code in our bid procurement. This particular vendor doesn't provide that. 
uh, they were clear in their response to the bid that they only use 10 code currently. Uh, other items that they were kind of, uh, that they were rejected for was we have a need to basically, if, if we have a, at the end of the day report, an area of the city that was missed, we wanted the ability to basically draw on a map an area and send a text out to those individuals who were within that service area so that they would know were aware that there was a, a miss in collection that day because of equipment failure, staffing issues, weather, construction, and we could target or pinpoint those specific residents rather than blasting the entire city with text messages. It would just go to those residents. Um, their, their software currently didn't meet that requirement. It's something that they said they could develop um, within, a, within a certain time frame, but as it stands now, they're, they're their technology doesn't meet that requirement. Um, additionally, we bid this on a schedule for what would it cost to text everyone um, an unlimited number of messages for a year. So we didn't want to go by per text message. Uh, they gave us a number, but then later on in their bid, as we were evaluating it, showing up there <laughs> technology go. right so in this particular bid item and they're in their qualifying in their submission they're basically saying that text messages cost this much and then if you exceed a character count there's an additional fee that'll be incurred and then at the end of the year they're going to determine you know, did we exceed our count or were we under and then do a cost adjustment? That's not what we were looking for in this bid. And other bidders basically followed the rules and said, this is what it'll cost for a year of this service. And we broke it down based upon if we're texting 1,000 people, 2,000 people, 5,000 people, because it's all based upon the number of people that subscribe to the service. So for that reason, uh, including an alternate fee schedule was not allowed in the bid. Uh, so that was another reason that they were rejected. Um, the final reason, or another point that we provided and a reason for rejection was ownership of data. It wasn't clear in their response who would own that data. Other providers in their response basically said the city of Omaha owns the data, uh, you control it, and if this doesn't work out, we give it back to you. You know, no harm, no foul. It wasn't as clear with them because they provided a link to a privacy policy to their website, which as you can imagine with any kind of website, you have to kind of really get into the weeds on that and see who owns the data. And what we found was um, they would secure part of the, or the, no, the more private information that could identify an individual. So an address, a phone number, an email, that would be secure. But they would also then, in their policy statement, would share the, the, some of the demographic information with third parties where that they might use for advertising. And, when we're providing the service for the residents of Omaha, we didn't want to also provide an opportunity for more advertisers to reach out to our residents. I mean, we all kind of get enough spam as it is. Uh, the final reason was had to do with integration with Nextdoor. Um, we use the Nextdoor app through their, um, they have a, they basically have a public agency portal through Nextdoor, so we occasionally send out notifications through the Nextdoor app, as well as Facebook and Twitter. And so what we were looking for was integration uh, with that particular platform. Uh, what we found is uh, through their media, a resident could share a text onto Nextdoor, but we couldn't directly put information out there. And that's what we were looking for, is to put it directly out there. Okay. Thank you. Next, we'll hear from the company, a representative of the company who's appealing the bid rejection, Mr. Galad by uh, Zoom. We'll get you off mute here in a second. You want to try that? There we go. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. President and Council. Thank you for hearing me today. I'm Jeff Gallad, uh, based in Toronto, Canada. I represent uh, Recycle Coach. We're one of two. Um, large platforms that provide recycling education information tools to cities. In fact, we work with 1,400 municipalities in North America. Um, thank you for your, your comments, uh, Mr. Uh, Key. Um, we did correspond a little bit today. 
Um, I put together a presentation. Um, I'm happy to address the points uh, that your colleague made. Um, I would just um, start off with one of the most glaring that um, you know, many of our responses um, did not include additional uh, development um, fees or work. Um, it was provided that we, you know, we won the bid and we would enable things that many of our cities have not asked for, but we would accommodate to your city. Um, and then I just, you know, one thing interesting today preparing for this meeting that I think council should be aware of is that the, um, the competitor to, uh, to us who was awarded this contract, um, their bid was for $42,000 annually. Um, ours was for, um, if you um, added up the uh, costing spreadsheet, ours was for 12,000. In fact, our license annually was only for $3,800 um, plus the usage of text messaging. And the reason um, the text messaging was done the way it was is we don't feel it's appropriate to charge um, a large quantity of users and text messages um, until we have some historical data to understand how many of your residents actually wanna use the SMS feature. So um, those are kind of the most important things glaring, but if um, council will allow, I'd be happy to share my presentation um, and address each issue individually or uh, take your questions, whatever you're more comfortable with. I don't, I don't see any lights on. I don't know that we need a big presentation. Um, yeah, if you want to maybe just give a quick summary of the points you sure. are identifying that were addressed yeah. by Mr. Key, then we'll see if there's questions and we'll go from there. Yeah, no problem. So um, around the short code, um, it's something we um, honestly just need to turn on and off. Our belief is that having a local member um, as much as possible send that text message is more effective. Um, but we did in our bid um, note that we would support short code. Again, um, many of the municipalities we work with don't really care, but um, for you, your requirements, we were happy to turn that on. Communication by zone is available. So in our platform to notify residents if there's a breakdown um, of a machine and their garbage collection is only on Monday, um, that is available in our system. To draw what is called a polygon um, is right now a managed service, but um, again, um, something we had committed to turning on for you if needed. Um, the privacy piece, I think um, um, many of you can appreciate our, our privacy policy is quite standard to any technology provider out there from um, Adobe and Microsoft down to a small tech company like ours. Um, we currently don't have any advertising initiatives, but um, as you know, I, I, I did look up some of you counselors and you've worked in tech companies and our lawyers, you can appreciate we did um, go something very broad with our privacy policy. Um, and no, none of the personal identifiable information would ever be monetized or sold. Um, that's not, our, that's not um, our core business. We focus on working with municipalities directly. Um, the next door integration, again, um, we're rarely asked for this. Um, um, Mr. Key was uh, correct in that assessment. We, um, the resident can share things to uh, Nextdoor, but it wouldn't take us much time to be able that, um, as you use Nextdoor as a municipality to communicate with your residents. So um, again, I think um, there was some misunderstanding. We did post questions during the RFP process. They were met uh, quite vague. Um, if the um, winning bid um, is actually more cost effective um, than ours at $3,800 uh, license per year. Um, we respectfully will walk away, but we thought it would be important to come to council today to, um, you know, surface that these, uh, one, it's, you know, roughly $30,000 more to go with our competitor when we ultimately do the same thing. And we do it, like I said, with 1400 cities already. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Good summary. Mr. Harding, you're recognized. I have a question, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Glad. Uh, when you say turning on, do you mean that that's a, uh, something that you would commit to putting in place and then being able to utilize, or is that something that you currently have that, um, that you just kind of, if you will, flip a switch? What's, um, what's, the, what's, the, phrase, what's the phrase turning on mean? Yeah, for sure. So in some cases we committed, um, and we do this in many of the tenders we answer um, um, in bids, um, we commit to having um, the specific requirement like a short code available in 30 days. Um, in some cases, we just need to um, take the technology being requested like the uh, Polygon communication and we need to make it available in our self-serve module instead of um, our success team, our customer service team, 
them doing it on your behalf. And so um, nothing um, glaring um, caused concern. And that's why in the bid, um, like we do many times, we said we would make available within 30 days. Okay, so if I could shorten the answer is that it doesn't currently exist, but you can accommodate it, you think, within a short order. Is that what you're saying? For most of the deliverables, yes, sir. Okay, but... And some know. exist. Right, I mean, short you. code does exist. We need to we need to turn that on. Um, the um, I'm, I'm unsure of the uh, communication by zone, um, why ours wouldn't satisfy that requirement, but if it needs to be done uh, via polygon, which is basically drawing on a map to communicate with users who are subscribed in that geography location, that would take 30 days for us to expose in the panel that your colleagues in, um, in solid waste would use. All right, thank you. Um, go over your privacy um, um, policy again. I mean, it currently, it sounds like there's at least the ability to, and not with any personal information, but demographic information, uh, there's an ability to uh, monetize that at some point. I know you said that that's not what your core business is, and I, I'm glad to hear that, but I'm also, um, it, it does sound like that there is that opening if at some point in time might be or could be uh, utilized. Again, it's a um, standard privacy policy that um, in conjunction you know, with our council we put together, um, there are no plans to um, monetize our users. Um, there are you know, opportunities, for example, um, I'll, I'll, I don't wanna get too technical, but for example, the um, content within our app that residents see says, um, you know, sponsored um, by, you know, um, by your city. So it would be sponsored by, you know, Omaha. There's an opportunity to use um, an advertising system to better track how many times residents would have used that. So we would serve that by an advertising platform, for example, um, instead of it being a hard-coded piece of text in the app. That's probably why you know, as we evolve our technology and become, you know, provide even deeper analytics and transparency, there's definitely opportunities in, in to use um, advertising technology. Okay, I, I don't think that's what the goal was here, but thank you for your answer. But there's not to monetize, correct. Thank you, Ms. Melton, you're recognized. Uh, yeah, and I don't know, Jim, could, could you come back up? Because I would just want to ask you a question. The, the difference in the bids is is quite big, but even in even in some of the things that I've been that I do in my other job or volunteering for even campaigns, when I look at the cost of this bid, it's so low that I can't imagine that we're going to get what we need for that amount. And the only thing that I could concur is that that data is being sold and it is being monetized because otherwise for 3,800, I just can't imagine we would get what we need. I mean, it's in district seven, I would spend more than that on one district, I think. So um, what what's your rationale for why you picked another bid other than this one? Uh, Jim Key, City of Omaha Public Works. Uh, part of it was the, the other provider, it was basically out of the box ready to go. And so we weren't going to have a 30-day lead-up time to implement this, a 30-day implement implementation time for another piece. It was it was basically the promises were made or through their bid, it would be ready to go out of the box. And again, with their privacy statement or with their direct statement to us that the city of Omaha's data will be stored separately from any of their other customer data, it is your data, you control it. And at the end of the day, if, if, if we have to part ways, you get the data. And to that, for us, that was important. And you know, when consulting with our IT department.com, um, you know, they full fledged recommend if, if you're going to enter any enter into any agreement with a software provider, make sure the city of Omaha owns the data and has control of it. Okay, and I, I think that's what means a lot to me. And I guess I'm sometimes I'm suspect of of bids that are almost too low. Then I'm suspect of what you're actually getting and what how they're making the money up on so in some other way. Were the other bids more in line with the one you selected? There were only two bids. Oh, there were only this two. This bidder and, and the one that we will have before council here in the next couple weeks. Uh, so you'll see them 
before you here shortly. I think the 13th is when it's scheduled to be on council agenda. So, yeah, a lot on the 13th. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's that's one of the reasons we, when we're selecting the bidder, we're looking at things holistically. We also called references. You know, one bidder provided six references, six going references. They all said, "Yep, bang up job. They're doing they're doing wonders for us." Uh, we called the three references provided by the one before you for the appeal. Uh, only one replied, and they're moving to a different platform. That's all I need to know. Thank you, Jeff. Sure. Thank you. There's no further lights. Is there a motion? Move to deny the application. Motion and a second. Roll call. Harding. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Rowe. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed six to one. Non-action items, items 41 through 68, do not require public hearing or city council consideration at this meeting, but will be placed on a future agenda for public hearing and or vote. The reason for non-action is noted after the item on the agenda, as well as the date the item is expected to appear on agenda for consideration. Second. Roll call. Harding. Yes. Johnson. Yes. Melton. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Rowe. Yes. Bagley. Aye. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed. Yes. 7 to 0. Yes. Meeting is adjourned at 4.06. Thank you and happy everybody. <laughs>